Hey everyone. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So today's video is uh, going to be on Design Cloud by ThemeCo. Now, Design Cloud is basically a library of templates that uh, currently ThemeCo has made, and they have opened it up to the public for you all to go ahead and submit yours as well. And what you can do is you can go through all of their templates. They have different um, categories such as headers, uh, content, uh, which is anything from full page to just sections. And then they also have footer ones and then they have presets for certain elements that you can go ahead and import and apply those to the elements that you're trying to style. Then they have packs, which is basically, think of it as a theme for your website. If you're looking for a specific theme or a look for all of your packs, you can go ahead and take these and customize them um, after the fact that you've imported them. Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and pause every so often just to see if I can read the comments. Let's see, okay. So from there, uh, Design Cloud is included in all of the um, Pro 2.0 versions so if you have pro and you have a license and it's validated on your website then you can go ahead and uh, use the design cloud feature and we're just going to go ahead and dive right into this because the best way to learn is to watch in my opinion okay so from there once you're actually inside of your website's dashboard you're going to notice that there's a pro tab here and a pro tab over here from there they both have the same settings for the most part um, this one over here just has a validation and settings tabs. But from there, you can actually access the validation. And as I was mentioned before, you can go ahead and make sure that you're validated here. You can go to ThemeCo's website, go into your dashboard, under licenses, and make sure that you're validated for the domain name. Once you're done there, you want to make sure that you have at least Pro 2.0 installed. The current version right now is 2.0.1, um, but you have to have at least 2.0. And once you have that actually validated, you're going to go ahead and you're going to navigate over to templates. And from there, you're going to see that they have the all new template manager. Now we're not going to get into this too much in this video. We're going to go ahead and do this on another day this week. Um, but just so you guys know, it's inside of the same template manager. And from here, you can see all of your different categories for all of your templates that you have saved or imported. And then over here on the right, you're going to see Design Cloud. So you can go ahead and click on that. And from there, you basically see everything that's on ThemeCo's website here. If we click under All, everything here, you will be able to see here. You can see the name of it, uh, a quick little preview, uh, who's designed it, and what type of template it is. And then you can actually install it right on your website. From there, it's going to be real easy to um, install all of these templates on your site and view them as well. So if you see one that you like, you can go ahead and click on it. It's going to open up a new tab, and it's going to show you the actual template in uh, a, like a live demo. And from there, you can see the different functions that it has. Um, you can go ahead and click on everything, see what it, the performance is, and then you can actually go ahead and exit out of that. And then once you actually want to install the template on your website, it's going to be as easy as just clicking the install. And then once it's done, it's going to say it's installed. And then from here, you can go to the back button or you can go back and click on templates. So we're going to go ahead and click back. And from there, we're going to be able to see that we've imported 23, which is the name of the template and then header. Okay, so we can actually see that. And then ThemeCo has been so generous to actually include a preview. So if you hover over the image, you can see the preview right here. All right, let's go back to Design Cloud. Okay, so that was a header, and we can see that right here. So let's go ahead and go to some footers. For the footers, we have a good five examples right here. And this is going to expand as theme code designs more. And also you might have noticed over here, you can submit your own templates. And from there, you're gonna go ahead and um, once you've already made your presets, 
you can go ahead and submit those as well. And I'll go ahead and uh, go through a little bit of that as well. All right, so let's go ahead and we've got uh, this one right here. So let's go ahead and see this one live. And if you go ahead and minimize your screen, you can also see it in responsive mode as well. Let's go ahead and next out of that. We see that it's a footer designed by ThemeCo. And we click install. Once it's installed, like I said, we can go back to the template manager. And we can see that we have Pronto installed, and it is a footer, and we have a preview right there. So it's a great way to install pre-made templates for your site so you can go ahead and get a quick start. Now, a lot of the um, people before 2.0 were uh, complaining that they didn't come with demo content. And you can pretty much think of this as demo content. Uh, it's not available for X because X already has their demo content, but this is the demo content that I believe that everyone was hoping to have. And it's great because you can import sections, headers, footers. You don't have to import the entire demo website, but you can just import different sections. Okay, so uh, other features of the design cloud are going to be that you can actually search it. So if you have a specific product, uh, a website that you're trying to build, such as a restaurant, you can go ahead and type in restaurant and anything that has been labeled restaurant will go ahead and pull up as well. I think adding a tag, man, a tags to the actual templates would be a great addition so that we can go ahead and possibly just name it restaurant or name it something different and then actually have tags that will be uh, able to be searched by the design cloud search bar up the top right. That would be a great addition um, that if ThemeCo can go ahead and do that. Just so searching would be just a lot easier. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we've imported two. So let's go ahead to a content. So we have a few different things here. We have a call to actions. We have like a pricing menu down here, testimonials, and we also have uh, a portfolio. Let's go ahead and check out this portfolio in action. Okay, so from here we have an entire page and you can see the subtle changes like the parallax on the images, different backgrounds. So they've gone ahead and done an entire page worth of content in this template, which is great. Let's see. So let's go ahead and install this as well. And we're going to go ahead and install one more and it's going to be a preset. And once we're done installing a preset, we're going to go through applying all of these um, different templates that we've imported into the actual website that we're building. Let's just take a little bit longer. I wonder if it's my internet connection. Let's see. There we go. It must have been a big template. So let's go ahead and do a preset. So we have a few different presets here. Um, some of them are entire packs. And then some of them are singles. There's two different types of presets. Packs include um, more than one element design so that you can import the preset for more than one element. And we'll go ahead and do a couple of these. So let's do the organic pack and let's do a simple button. Okay, so from there, we're gonna go back to our template manager. Yeah, I'll go ahead and show that as well, Karen. Okay, so once we've added that uh, that preset for the pack, you can see that it's named organic. And then we have all of the different um, elements that have been designed for that pack. And then it tells you the name of what it, whatever they are. So let's go ahead and start uh, applying these to our, our actual website. So let's start off with the header. Let's go ahead and we have a blank slate and I only have one header that I've been designing. So we can either start blank or we can use a template. If we click choose template, then we're gonna go ahead and select the one that we've imported, 23. And let's go ahead and name this global just because this is gonna be our main template that we're gonna use. Okay, from here we have this. And let's make this apply to every page on our website by clicking make global on the right hand side. 
From there, we're able to go ahead and edit this just like we uh, normally would before 2.0 came out. All right, so we have all of the different bars and, and containers, things of that nature. We have um, the hero image down here. We have different logos and containers. And if you guys want to learn more about how to uh, edit this, there is a video on the YouTube channel, and we can go ahead and link that uh, down below later on as well. But they have the entire thing here. Uh, basically, the only thing that you would have to change is the menu. So you would have to go here, click on the menu, and you would have to click on one of your menus here, and then your logo. You can go ahead and change the logo by clicking the image and clicking this, and it will show up here. So we can just have our logo right there. And then, of course, you can change all of the colors uh, so that it matches the website that you have, and that way you can um, match the branding. And then all you have to do is just change the colors up in the template. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. Let's go back to our templates. So we've done the headers, which is this one. Uh, let's go ahead and apply the footer that we've chosen. So we're gonna go to footers. We're gonna use a template, choose Pronto. And this one is also gonna be global. Create, click on this, make global. If you guys have any questions you can definitely let me know um, it's a little bit quiet in the comment section okay so same here you can go ahead and edit this and you have all of your different sections here so you have your containers you have your buttons um, here here and here and then inside of your second container you have all of your different social media <clears throat> and everything that you have can be edited uh, to match your branding. So if you wanted to add the bar's background, you can go ahead and choose a different background color. Just like that. And you can choose different colors for your text. Let's see, we can add some text color there. Change your social icons to whatever color you desire. There we go. So there's a bunch of different options that you can go ahead and do once you've actually imported the template. The template is yours to use once you've imported it. There's no uh, regulations on what to do with it. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have the header and footer, let's move on to the content. We're gonna go ahead and edit on this page. It is a blank page. Thanks, Karen, for linking that. So, we have our our header and we have our footer here let's go ahead and add a section and now in that section let's go ahead and, and open up the templates so that we can see what we have for our content for the content we have an architecture portfolio let's go ahead and add that section architecture portfolio now this can be done by loading template right here you don't have to have anything selected just go to load template select the drop down and click insert and this is going to go ahead and take its time load the template and then once we're done with that it's going to show in between your header and your footer you can see over here that we have all of the the sections so we can actually get out of that delete the first one we made and we have all of that beautiful work that ThemeCo has gone ahead and made easily importable for your website ready to go okay so we imported some presets earlier and that was right here we have all of this preset section that we can go ahead and style so we have a, let's go start with the accordion just for an example let's go ahead down here we're going to add a new section we're going to type an accordion and drop this down so you notice right now the accordions are just white with a basic drop shadow um, nothing special about them got it open like that so we want to go ahead and apply a preset to this 
So we can go ahead and click this and it knows that we're working with an accordion. So it's only going to give us the accordion preset. It's not going to give us a list of drop down of the entire organic preset. So we don't have to go searching through it. Um, so we can go ahead and click this and click apply. It's going to ask us if we want to replace all the element styling. We click yes. So we've gone ahead and immediately everything has already been replaced. All of the changes have been made. Your content is still the same, so it doesn't change the content. And then from there, you have your styling for an organic themed accordions item. Let's do one more so we can see a little bit of a, a more noticeable change. Let's do an alert. So for the alert, we have this. Let's go ahead and check the preset and hit apply. Now this one's going to ask if you want to replace uh, the styling or if you, and if you want to replace the content. If you replace the content, it's going to basically just leave you with default text and it will get rid of all of your text. So we're going to do a couple of tests. So let's just go ahead and apply the element styling without replacing the content. So we're going to do that and we have this organic themed alert box. This is some new content. All right, so we have this. Let's go ahead and apply the preset and replace the content. There. So it automatically deleted all of the text that you had in it and replaced it with just some basic text. Uh, be careful when you're applying the preset because if you accidentally check this and you have all of your text in there, or if you've done any special styling or HTML in there, then it's going to replace all of it and you'll have to redo all of your work. Uh, thanks, Ronald. What happens if you delete a template that is active? Well, we can go ahead and check that. Um, my guess is it's not going to do anything because once you've already applied the template, then it's gonna go ahead and just keep those settings here. But let's go ahead and try it. So we've got, so let's go ahead and delete a footer or a header. And we'll also delete, let's just delete the entire library. Let's go ahead and check all. Delete 32 templates and yes, delete. So we've deleted all of our templates. Let's go back to our headers. And we can see that this template that we've imported is now still part of our section for the header um, and we'll go to the footers and the global it's still there let's go to our content and I'm not sure if I saved the page or not yeah I did okay so we'll go to the content we'll see that the architecture is still there and our organic styling is still there so if you load a preset, apply it, and then delete it after it's been applied, all of your work will still stay saved, which is great. So if you apply it and then you want to get rid of it or clean out your template library, you can go ahead and do that without having any worries. So does this version have the option to limit what users are seeing? With users, I mean the website owner. Um, okay, Ronald, so you're looking to it's a little bit off topic for the design cloud and we can go ahead and get into that more with uh, v2 elements um, so the answer that I have for you right now is I am not sure because I have not looked into that but if you want to we can, you can go in a private message me and we can go ahead and I can take a look at it and we can get into that into another video um, but as I mentioned it's not really relevant to this video so we can go ahead and check that out unless you're asking if the website does the website owner can access all of the um the design cloud and for that we would have to go under the pro settings and we can allow content editing rules for other than administrator but other than that i do not see a way to uh, limit what people see based on their role of the website. Okay, so uh, John, I can't highlight my mouse while I'm live. I don't have a software to do that, but it will be highlighted when I upload it to YouTube. Sorry about that. It will definitely be highlighted when I upload it to YouTube. Okay, so let's see what else we have. Let's go ahead and 
let's go ahead and talk about submitting your templates to ThemeCo. So once we're in the template manager, there's a section underneath the design cloud that allows us to submit templates to ThemeCo. Now I've seen a few people uh, mention in the group that they've already submitted templates to ThemeCo. So there's obviously, obviously an approval process that has to go on with that, which makes sense. So if you're submitting a template to ThemeCo, I would be prepared to wait at, at least a week um, before they even get to it. And I'm not sure how they're pushing updates to the library. If they're going to go ahead and update this on the back end, um, if they're pushing them one by one or in groups, or if we have to update to 2.0.2 to get all of those. Um, not sure how the, uh, the push process works for new templates. But as I'm sure that as more people add templates, they will get faster and faster on publishing those. And it would be a seamless process to go ahead and do those as well. Let's see, Karen, it's also easy to save stuff as you create a template. Okay, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and go through the process of saving templates uh, to the cloud as well. So as, you, as I mentioned, there is a submit your templates. Right now it's in beta. So things can change uh, later on as the uh, RC comes out. So you can go ahead and get started. And once you've gone ahead and click get started, ah, I don't have any templates. So that would help if I had some templates first. Let's go ahead and make a template then. Let's see. Let's go ahead and save a section as a template. So let's say, for example, we want to just save this section right here as a template. You can see that it's called a side. So let's go ahead and the layout and save template. We're going to uncheck everything that we don't want. So a side right here. And this is going to be a um, CTA basic background. Save. Now let's navigate over to our templates. And we have our background here. I don't have a preview because I didn't take a screenshot. Um, but we have our, our template here. Let's go ahead and try and upload this. I'm not going to actually upload it to ThemeCo uh, because it is their design and it will obviously get rejected. But just for uh, the tutorial. So let's click get started. And we're going to go ahead and select it's a single because it's only one template. You're not installing temp a pack for the entire um, for the entire theme, uh, such as like accordions, alerts, buttons, um, stats, things like that. So it's just single. And then we're going to select the template that we want to choose. So we have the CTA basic background. And from there, you can actually choose multiple ones if you're doing the uh, pack. From here, you can go ahead and create a 640 by 640 image, which is going to be basically this image that you see here. Okay, just make it so it's relevant to what you're uploading. You can see that basically they're just taking screenshots of some of the items and adding it. Um, it looks like they're going into kind of like a responsive view. Because if you look at this one, it's, it's wide. But if you go into responsive view, it gets smaller like that. So go into responsive view, make a, a screenshot, and make it into 640 by 640, upload it, um, and then go ahead and upload it as that. So you choose a file, and we can go ahead and do I need downloads. I don't. We can try and use this one. This was something that we were using earlier. And then you go ahead and name your submission. So let's name this architecture. And then we can go ahead and if you want credit for it, you can go ahead and check this box. And then when you're done, you can go ahead and hit submit. Now, like I said, this is going to go through a submission process and uh, ThemeCo will go ahead and weed the ones out that they don't want and they'll go ahead and automatically um, approve the ones that they do want and then it'll appear here uh, when they're pushing out the updates like I said I don't know when they're gonna be pushing out the updates 
it's all like I said it's all brand new it's still in beta so things are definitely going to be changing um, once they get everything finished uh, let's see does anyone have any questions it was a very it's gonna be a very quick video uh, right now all of the templates inside of design cloud are free um, but if you read the frequently asked questions they do talk about the possibility of being able to purchase templates inside of design cloud at some point so they're just exploring that option let's see yeah this basically covers all of design cloud um, it's very simple to use once you uh, once you update your pro to 2.0 you click on design cloud you just install it and you use it as a regular template right here so you can have it just like this let's see do, 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 do. any questions what was the flower let's go over one more thing real quick just while we're waiting to see if anybody has any questions so as I mentioned right now we're in the content and uh, I think we released a video earlier before they released 2.0 on being able to navigate between headers and footers in content so right now we're in the content section and if we want to edit this footer we can actually just click on this and hit yes and it's going to go ahead and automatically open up that footer so we can go ahead and edit this and then once we're done we can go ahead and edit back to editing the page that we are editing once we're done with the footer that's a nice little seamless process to do that instead of having to click here go to content go back to template and wait for it to load and then once it's done loading then we can begin editing again let's see no questions uh, yes Karen we did import a pack but I can go through it again I have no problems so we go to design cloud go to presets and we can see the packs are up here and then once we go through with the packs we can actually import minimal and now it says install, which is a little bit of a odd choice of words. I would have rather have seen import because when I see install, I'm thinking I have to install something on the website to get it to function. And if for some reason I delete it, then it doesn't function anymore. I would rather see the word import there. So if you're listening, ThemeCo, import instead of install. Okay, so we have our template manager. We'll go back to the pack. We can see all of our packs here for all of our items so let's go ahead to our content let's go ahead to edit the template and let's delete all of that let's go ahead and add an accordion apply a preset let's go to button now remember this is a minimal preset so you may not see too many changes minimal button apply so you can see they're all green okay let's go ahead and add um, content area drop down and let's apply the preset yes so we've got this and the drop down it's not showing because I don't have any more space in my content but once we add more elements it will um, let's see if we have one for counter yes we do so we've got the counter here and we have a navigation collapsed all right, so let's go ahead there. Apply the preset just as normal. And here we go. There is the navigation collapsed. And as you can see, we can see the 
the content drop down now that we have more space. I would still check to make sure everything looks good on your mobile devices just because you're importing it from the design cloud it may not be completely responsive because it is user-based submitted and it is theme code submitted so it's a cross between professional and um, possible people who were just submitting templates just because they want other people to use them um, not to offend anybody but some people don't check for responsive mobile or anything like that so we can go ahead and apply the preset for the stat bar and we can see that so everything changes subtly when you when you go ahead and add the preset same one here let's add the preset for the quote and we have that yes add the ability to easily navigate between header footer and content areas so yeah that was a great addition i'm very happy that they did that um if only they added the ability to edit the header on a specific page so if it's a global header you can choose the page that you want to edit it on um, similar to how you could do with customizer so if you're in customizer and you're in the additional css section and you choose a different page to edit from it'll actually show you that page live that would be a great addition as well uh, there is one more thing i wanted to show you all which could be a game changer i just found it late last night Let's go ahead and do this. All right, let's go back to our template manager. Okay, so we have all of that minimal pack, okay? And when we add a new button, let's go ahead and just add a new button. Okay, this is what the new button looks like. It's got a drop shadow, it's a white, um, it's got black text, okay? Let's go ahead and save this. Now over here in the bottom right hand bottom left hand corner there are three gears all right those are the settings if you click on this it actually brings up an elements defaults pop up now this is pretty awesome because once you import your packs or if you have presets that you make for a website you can actually go in and choose which um, pack you want the default button to be now this comes at a at a at a price as well, and I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so I'm just going to add a few. Uh, search in line, search drop down. Okay, so I've got a few of the minimals added here. Let's go ahead and save, and we'll go ahead and X out of this, and let's refresh our content builder. Now remember the button that we added earlier uh, looked like it had a back shadow. I had the drop shadow on it, it had black text, and it had a white background. So let's go ahead and add a button again. And this time, you can see that it looks like the preset that we added, which is awesome. That is a great, great way to do things. Um, the only thing that might be missing is being able to now edit all of the buttons that are default into a different format which i know is something that has been discussed in the group so this is something that could be uh, in the long run for the co but there is a default preset and i'm i don't know why i'm using quotes for my hands because you guys can't see me but there's a default setting that you can apply to all of your elements that are v2 that doesn't apply to classic elements it only applies to v2 elements um so you can make your own preset, which we can go ahead and do right now. Let's go ahead and add this. Let's add a let's add a button. And let's say, for example, we want the background to be red. We want the interaction to be black. We want the no border. I want border. Mm -hmm. Let's go to. Oh, this is making sense. Take off the border radius. No back shadow. Text, we want that to be white. 
and then on interaction we want that to be white as well so something something similar to that let's take all of all of the uh, particles so we just have something simple like this let's save this as a preset so we just click save preset and this is the global button that we want click save from there we can go back to our template manager and once we're in the template manager we can go back to the settings click on the button and click on global button save Let's go ahead and refresh this once we save. From there, we're gonna go ahead and be able to add a button with that global styling in place. So we have that global styling here. We can add as many buttons as we want and they will all look the same. Now there's no way to globally change all of these buttons that you've created though. That's the only downfall. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, I will stick one for about, I don't know, 30 more seconds. Um, but if you guys have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Um, you can always comment on this video later and I will get the notification. Let's see, just wait a couple more seconds to see if anybody has any questions. I will say that I think this, this element defaults, I think that is a great thing to have. I do like that a lot. I think that's my favorite part of Pro 2.0. Okay, well, if you guys don't have any more questions, I will go ahead and sign off. Um, we have a lot more live videos coming up, so be sure to stick around and see what we have to come. Thanks again. Yeah, of course, John. It's my pleasure. Yeah, Karen, that is it is a big downfall to not be able to change them globally, but um, at least you can do this. So that way you don't have to style each one individually. So it's it's one step closer to being able to have global um, buttons. I mean, they have this here. They just got to go one extra step, in my opinion. It might not be like that for a lot of other people. Okay, so if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Thank you.